All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Let's have a prayer first. Lord, as we begin today, we ask freshness of your spirit that out of confused issues may come simplicity of plan, that out of fear may come confidence, that out of hurry may come deliberation, that out of frustration may come guidance. Let us get to our work, not head first, but heart first. May we be able to disagree without being disagreeable, to differ without being difficult, to be honest without tension, and frank without offense. In an atmosphere of teen spirit, Amen. All right, so how are you guys? Uh huh, that's good to hear. So now let's have an attendance first. So say present if you are around when I call your name. So if you are late or your mic is broken, you, get, you can just type your name in the chat box, all right? Okay. Abante? Vinagua? Castillo? De La Cruz, Jacinto, Hakalan, Ramirez, Zuela. Okay, so before we proceed to our discussion for today, I will let you watch some movie clips from Filipino movies that have iconic lines that have made their mark through the years. So, are you guys familiar with my X and Y's and Barcelona A Love Untold? That's good to hear. I am glad that you guys are all familiar with those movies. Anyway, what you are going to do is to take note the languages that the characters were speaking, and then you will identify what is their first language and the additional language that the characters have used. Lastly, analyze the purpose of the characters, why they speak in another language, if they did. All right. So are you ready, guys? Great. So let's watch. Ali. Tagal, tagal na nun. Pero yung matagal na yun, nandito pa rin. That was just one mistake. Isa lang. Kay isa, dalawa, tatlo, pareho lang yun. Sumusaw ka pa rin sa iba. Lasing ako nun. Lintik na palusot yun. Kahit lasing ka, alam mo ginagawa mo. Kaya nga, nagsorry ka agad ako sa'yo nun, di ba? Kasi kahit anong sabihin ko, I was wrong. Nagkamali ako, nasaktang kita. All right. So in the first movie clip, what are the languages the characters have used? Okay, yes, Ralph. Uh huh. That's correct. Tagalog and English. So now, what do you think the first language of the characters? Yes, Faith. That's correct. It's Tagalog. How about the additional language? That's right. It's English. Okay. So now let's go back and read the lines silently and analyze the purpose of the characters. Why they switch from their first language to the embedded or additional language. Okay. So... As you can see, Sergio was the only one who spoke English language. So why do you think he switched from his first language to embedded language? Anyone? Okay, yes, Hannah. 
Yeah. Good observation, Hannah. So that's correct. So Sergio switched from his first language to embedded language because he wanted to emphasize that the one mistake that he did is not a big deal. You can also see it in his expression that he was taking his mistake lightly. All right. So now let's move on to the next movie clip from the Barcelona A Love Untold. Stop acting like you own it. Napapwede mo sabihin sa akin kung kailan ako mag-move on. Kahit si Silin. Kahit si Silin na kasama ko sa lahat, na alam ang lahat, hindi pinakilaman yung mga desisyon ko. Hindi ako si Silin. So stop comparing me to her. Tama! Hindi ikaw si Silin. And you will never be Silin. Silin is dead. Hindi na siya babalik, Ellie. Pero hanggang ngayon, umaarte ka pa rin na parang nandito siya. Nandito siya! Alright. Now, what are the languages the characters have used? Yes, Raul? That's correct. It's Tagalog and English. So now, what do you think the first language of the characters? Yes, Faith? That's correct. It's Tagalog. How about the, the additional language? That's right. It's English. So now let's read the lines and analyze the purpose of the characters. Why they switch from their first language to embedded or additional language. So as you can see, both of the characters spoke the English language. So why do you think Ellie and Mia switch from their first language to embedded language? Anyone? Yes, Hana? Mm -hmm. Good observation, Hana. So Ellie switched from his first language to embedded language because he wanted to rub it in Mia's face that he does not want her to meddle with his decisions in life and he will never look Mia as the same as he looked at his ex, Celine. So we can tell from his expression that he still loves his ex. How about Mia? Why did she switch from her first language to embedded language? Yes, Jason? That's correct, Jason. So we can see that Mia is in love with Ellie and she does not want to be compared to his dead ex-girlfriend, Celine. So that's why she wanted to express her feelings by switching from her first language to embedded language. Okay? So our topic for today is about code switching. So code switching is the practice of moving back and forth between two languages or between two dialects or registers of the same language at one time. So code switching occurs far more often in conversation than in writing. So in code switching, one language is dominant. So this is called matrix language. And the additional language is called embedded language. So the matrix language lays out the basis for the communication. And utterances from the additional language are what we call embedded language, okay? So there are various reasons why people might switch from the matrix language to an embedded language. So we have six reasons. We have directive function, expressive function, referential, phatic, metalinguistic, and poetic function. So the first one is directive function. So people switch languages to either include or exclude other people from the conversation. So for example, maybe you want to tell secrets. So you switch to a language that the people around you don't understand or maybe the opposite. Maybe you want to end the private conversation and you engage with the people around you. So 
you switch to a language that they do understand, okay? So the second one is expressive function. So people include the embedded language in order to express some part of their identity. For example, um, you want to show your connection to a certain country or culture. So in some cases, it might be an expression of status through association with the prestigious outgroup. So the third one is referential function. So someone is unable to express an idea easily in one language. So they switch to the other language in order, in order to express it more easily. So this seems to be very common among bilingual children and immigrant families, okay? So the fourth one is phatic function. So sometimes a speaker switches language or repeats something in both languages in order to emphasize it. So a good example of this are the movie clips we have watched. So as you know, the characters from the movies switch from their first language to embedded language because they want to emphasize their feelings or emotions. So the fifth one is metalinguistic function. Reporting something in the other language or commenting on something said in the other language. So for example, you are speaking in Japanese, but then you quote a lyric from an English language song without translating it. So maybe you say something the embedded language, but then you explain it or add further commentary in the matrix language. So the sixth one or the last one is poetic function. So the speaker says certain words or makes joke in the embedded language for amusement or for some kind of artistic purpose. All right. So code switching takes a few different forms. So here are some of the main ones. So we have intersential switching, intrasentential switching, extra sentential or tag switching. So when we say inter intersential switching, so this is the language switches for on uh, for entire sentences or clauses. So for example, sometimes I'll start a sentence in English and tinatapos ko sa Filipino. So this is an example of intersential switching. All right. So the second one is intrasentential switching. So the speaker switches languages within a clause or sentence boundary. I, for example, I don't know ang aking lugar sa mundo. So the uh, code switching happens within a clause or sentence boundary, okay? So the third one is extra sentential or tag switching. So it is a tag from one language is inserted into another language. So for example, it is a good movie, ano? So instead of saying it's a good movie, right? So you insert ano into that sentence. So we call that tag switching. So now do you understand the code switching? Any questions or clarifications regarding the topic? All right, so that's good to hear, class. So let's see if you really, you really did understand the lesson. So now I want you guys to think of a scenario wherein you use code switching and write a short dialogue. So it can be something that you have experienced or encountered. So write it in the chat box. All right. So I will give you 15 minutes to finish it. All right, so time's up. Now let's have an evaluation, okay? So identify the form of linguistic code switching in each line from the movie starting over again and type your answer in the chat box. So I will only give you three minutes to finish it so you may start answering. So just type your answers in the chat box, okay? All right, time's up. So let's check. So the 
So the correct answer for number one is intersensual switching. Number two, intrasensual switching. Number three, intrasensual switching. Number four, intrasentential switching. Number five, also intrasentential switching. Okay. All right. All right. So thank you for listening, guys. I hope you guys learned a lot and have fun from my discussion. So if you have any questions regarding to my lesson, feel free to tap it in the chat box. So please open your cam and let's take a picture. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. So thank you, guys. See you in our next meeting. Class dismissed. You may leave the meeting, guys. Okay, thank you.